Hello and welcome to the next Lucosa Retro Game Review video. What a winner I've chosen for this one. Uh, so this is, give my regards to Broad Street, which was released by Argus Press Software in 1985. It was either 4 or 5. I'll have to check on that. Um, right, well, what I shall do is get a game underway straight off because one go of this goes on for a, a fucking age. And while you're playing it, it feels like it goes on for longer than that. So here we go. So, this is based on the film, uh, yeah, the Paul McCartney film, which I've never seen and never want to. So I can only assume that the uh, object of this game is the same as the film. So apparently uh, you have been uh, attacked or something and uh, the song you are working on has been stolen and you are suffering from amnesia so you can't remember it. So what you decide to do is go and meet a load of your mates who have various bits of the song uh, which they then give to you then once you have the song completed you return to Abbey Road Studios go to the mixing desk and uh, put the song together and voila fail and uh, you uh, end up as a busker uh, who can't play for shit. So in order to get the pieces back you need to uh, basically be at the right place at the right time. Let's put that into some context. You're driving around in a car which is not very easy to control and you have to be at a certain place at a certain time. Yep, this is the game that basically gave Ocean Software the idea for Miami Vice. So this game has a fucking lot to answer for. Now unlike Miami Vice, your car doesn't explode when it comes into contact with anything and everything. It will only explode if you come into contact with other cars, as you've already seen. And there aren't that many other cars driving around, which means this is clearly a very accurate portrayal of central London. I mean, I'm on the main thoroughfare here. I'm heading towards Oxford Circus. Yeah, here we are at Marble Arch. Not another car in sight. And if you've ever been in central London, uh, you'll know, yeah, that's left bang on. Anyway, um... So in the info panel on the bottom here, um, so you see uh, the face of uh, one of the friends, uh, where they are, so that's which is Elephant, obviously that's Elephant and Castle, and what time they were there. Now they were all going around their journeys around London on the uh, underground, and Holland Park 1031, and I'm at Lancaster Gate, so wrong one, Holland Park's over here not fucking far away but I've missed it by well long enough now here's Holland Park so I missed it by uh, six minutes or six seconds in game time so you just stand around here doing fuck all so let's just piss off again anyway yeah so you see uh, the, the face of them where they are and what time. Now when that changes, um, your time, which is in the uh, right hand box, that pauses for a little bit, and I do mean a little bit, to give you a bit of time just to get to, you know, a, a space where you can then get out of the car and stand outside the uh, Tube station. 
it is easier said than done. Um, So I'm out at Holland Park again. I mean, this is one of two ways you have of playing the game. You can either try and drive around uh, London here and try and get to uh, you know, the various places and try and predict where they are going to go. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a London taxi driver. I haven't done the knowledge. I don't know my way around, you know, every London road and whatever. I mean, okay, they're not all here, but there are plenty of them to make it fucking difficult. Holland Park. See, I was right there, wasn't I? And I missed them by two minutes, so, you know, fuck all. I mean, your timer does stop going down, or going up, rather. Um when it gives you their uh, you know, new uh, location. But it still only gives you something like about two or three seconds in order to be at the exact point that you have to be. Anyway, yeah, so the first way of playing it is to try and uh, yeah, drive around London and get to you know, the particular place. Oh, fucking hell, I was about a pixel out, so yeah. Whenever you hit another car, it takes you right back to uh, the start, which is uh, yeah, the Abbey Road Studios, just near the Lord's Cricket Ground. Uh, the other way then to do it is the way that I am pretty much forced uh, to do. So you see that fucking Holland Park again, but oh, I'm not there now. Yeah, the other way that I do is go on to uh, the longest road, which is the one that I was on, which has the most um, tube uh, stations. So here we are, oh no, it's not your next one. So here we are at Holland Park, but of course I, I missed them by 17 minutes, so not a fucking prayer. Uh, yeah, and basically just drive up and down here and wait for them to arrive at either Holland Park, where a lot of them do stop. Notting Hill is used fairly often, Queensway rarely. Uh, Lancaster Gate is used semi-often. And uh, where else we got? Marble Arch crops up every now and then. Uh, yeah, and basically just wait around here for them which makes for a really riveting game. Anyway, um, as I was pointing out near the start, she's now at West Kensington, which uh, I don't think is on this road. Uh, yeah, this is basically the game that gave Ocean the idea for Miami Vice. The one good thing is your car only explodes if it hits another car. If it hits anything else, it just comes to this juddering halt. Holland Park again, so you're right, I've got to get there fucking fast. And I want the wrong fucking stop. But the other thing is, if like it's doing now, it's flicking through people arriving at places quickly, and they've all arrived at the same place. So say for example you've got this one at Camden Town at 1300, and then someone else just previous to her had been at Holland Park. The Holland Park one gets completely dumped and you would turn up on time uh, but there would be no one there because it's moved on to the next person. I'll let you figure out how much that fucks you off while you're playing this. Um, to, to progress in this game is ludicrously fucking hard. Um, And to be honest, you don't feel any sort of incentive or desire to even try. So I'm going to hang around uh, Notting Hill here and uh, while I uh, begin the review. 
Uh, graphically, uh, the only graphics that are really any good at all, and even then it's only occasionally, are the, the faces in the window in the bottom uh, corner here. I mean, that bloke doesn't half look like Ringo. I don't know if he is, as I say, I've not seen the film, I don't know if Ringo stars in it. Um, but yeah, the rest of the graphics vary from staggeringly bland to uh, utterly fucking hideous. In terms of audio, there are no sound effects of any kind. Um, there are two pieces of music. There is this uh, not very good rendition of Band on the Run uh, during the main gameplay. Uh, the scale of that statement a not very good rendition of Band on the Run. I mean, the song is abysmal at the best of times, and this sounds worse. And you can't begin to imagine how fucking sick of this fucking piece of music you get by the time you've finished one game of this, let alone if you play it a few times, uh, which I did back in the day. This is a game that I had. I'm not proud of it. Uh, the other piece of music that gets played is if you manage to actually meet someone, you know, by being at the right place at the right time. And uh, the uh, song that you're trying to uh, recover, is that car going to hit me? Yes it did, because it turned and... I bet you someone turns up at fucking Notting Hill now. Anyway, yeah, so the other piece of music is uh, No More Lonely Nights. That's the piece of music that you were supposedly working on and you've forgotten. I fucking wish I could have forgotten that song. In fact, I had forgotten it until uh, getting the uh, disc image for this game again. right down until I hit the edge there. No, I, I'm too far. Oh, okay, I didn't think I was going to do that. Queensway. Oh, I missed him by fucking six minutes, so it might as well have been fucking six days for this game. At some point in this video, I would like to actually, you know, show you a bit more than just driving around uh, London here but this is it and this is the entire game it's fucking tedious beyond belief I mean alright compared to Miami Vice it's good but fuck me I mean <laughs> that really is not what I would call high praise. God, this game's good when you compare it to Miami Vice. Well, fucking hell. In Miami Vice, your car explodes, and um, it explodes because you drive on grass. At least here, you know, if you, if you hit anything other than another car, your car just mm, stops. But I mean, the gameplay is fucking boring because all you are doing is just, well, I say most of the time just driving backwards and forwards across the same sort of road. Because if, if you are going to try and drive around uh, uh, there or London uh, to try and be at the right place at the right time, I mean, it's a thankless fucking task. I mean, I've heard some people say it helps if you know your way around London. Well, I know my way around London pretty well. I mean, on the tube trains, anyway. I, I know it like the fucking back of my hand. But, uh, you know, it doesn't have every single London street here. It's, it's only an approximation. I mean, if we carry on going here. So after uh, Queensway, then we're at Lancaster Gate. 
and then it takes us to Marble Arch, and then it takes us on the Bond Street. Well, Marble Arch, you know, is not on the same road as Bond Street. Bond Street doesn't run straight into Oxford Circus. In fact, technically, there isn't a Bond Street in London. It's New Bond Street. So, yeah, even if you do know your way around London, it's, it's not a huge amount of help. And of course, one go of this game goes on for a hell of a long time, because uh, even if you lose a life through getting hit by a car, or, oh, I'll show you here, um, if you stay here too long, a... Uh, traffic warden comes along and uh, your car gets well, I don't think it gets clamped but yeah you get a parking ticket yeah. but then when either of those things happen all it does is take you back to uh, the starting point it's always the same starting point so if you've got pretty far somewhere you know say you are at the Elephant and Castle, which is, you know, south of the river. Um, it doesn't matter, it just takes you right all the way back there. So if you've been waiting around like I well, pretty much have to do, um, and then a car just comes along and hits you, tough. And it's pretty unforgiving as well as being pretty fucking tedious. And I am really sick of this fucking music. So anyway, yeah, so I covered graphics, I covered audio, and the gameplay It's one of the most tedious games I've ever played. It's not the worst game I've ever played by any stretch, but it's just... It's as if somebody thought, you know, oh, I don't know, let's just uh, do some sort of interactive demo sort of thing, showing a car driving around uh, London. And then someone said, oh, we'll make a game of that. And they just tacked on this tiny amount of gameplay of, you know, being at exactly the right place at the right time. And said, there you go, right, we'll, we'll, we'll call that a game and, and release that. And of course, while making it an official, you know, film tie-in, they probably thought that they could... Uh, Uh, you know, get extra sales from that. But was Give My Regards to Broad Street really the sort of film that your average sort of teenage gamer in, you know, in the mid to early 80s, is that really the sort of film that was going to grab them? Were they really going to rush out and buy a... Oh, ha, found someone. That's it, just that one uh, piece. So, we've got one. You have to get ten. Once you have all ten together, you've got the uh, complete uh, bit of music. So, we now bugger off and we've got to... That's it! You do that ten times and... Um, yeah. You've got your bit of music. And then you have to go to the studios and, and record it. Up. So yeah, the, the game is tedious, it's boring if you play it the only way you really can play it, you know, because trying to get to the right location, yeah, good luck. So 
So, uh, yeah, I score this 2 out of 10. There is very, very limited sort of novelty value, I suppose, when you first start playing it the first couple of times. Especially if you live in London or you know London pretty well. But yeah, it does not fucking last. So there you go, that is uh, give my regards to Broad Street. Um, oh yes, the point I was making earlier, I mean, is, is this really the sort of film that, you know, would get the average sort of games player in the early to mid 80s to say, oh yeah, okay, I'll definitely buy that. I want a game that's based on give my regards to Broad Street and I constantly have to remind myself to say Broad Street not Broadway so I've already forgotten what rating I fucking gave this it was either 1 or 2 well ok whatever it was I'll revise it I give it 1 out of 10 there is Like two out of ten. It's, it's more pliable than my device. Again, isn't that fucking uh, it's high praise? This game is more pliable than my device. The music, though, my device, uh, the game, features some of the best music I've ever heard from a Commodore 64. This most certainly does not. Um, oh, fuck. Yeah, okay, right, well, I've had enough of that. So let's give my regards to Broad... Uh, I nearly did it there. Give my regards to Broad Street. Um, I'll score it 2 out of 10. It's a tedious game. Uh, what little novelty value it may have had to start with does not last. And... Yeah. It's just fucking boring. Uh, Highgate Cemetery somewhere around here. I think I've gone the wrong way though. Oh, who fucking cares? Yeah, anyway, yeah, I've, I've had enough. So, um, yeah. Two out of ten for that one. Don't waste your time, really. Uh, that brings this review to an end, and we'll see you at the next one.